currently is changed into DRNB CTVS course that is doctorate of national board in cardiovascular and thoracic surgery by the national board of examinations as of 2024 if you don't have any seniors to guide you in your hospital or if you're making a decision to come into the cardiothoracic field then watch this video till the end and have some insights on the whole DRNB CTVS structure Before we dig into the course structure, let me tell you that DNB is at par with MCH nowadays. Even the training in the hospitals is as similar to that of an MCH training, but you have to choose the hospitals depending upon uh, what gives you a better holistic training. So, the salary for a fresh graduate is around 2 lakh to 2.5 lakhs per month. and in tier 1 cities and around 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh per month in tier 2 and tier 3 cities as you progress in your career or if you hustle more then you can the salary can go up to 5 lakh per month and also up to 10 lakh per month and so on and so forth all within the first 10 years of your career the stipend and residency ranges somewhere around 50000 per month to 90000 per month inr depending upon the state you are practicing in depending upon the state regulations and also the hospital you are practicing in uh the fees currently for drnb ctvs course is 1.25 lakh per annum earlier when i was doing my residency it was 70000 per annum but right now it is 1.25 lakhs These are few of the conferences you must attend over the course of the year. Compared to MCH which is like a 3 plus 3 year course, DRNB CTVS which is like a 6 year integrated uh, cardiothoracic course is divided as 2 year plus 3 year plus 1 year. For the first 2 year is a general surgery training, the next 3 years is the cardiothoracic training and the last 1 year is the internship. Though there is a curriculum that has been put up by the NBE, most of the your training in the hospital depends upon your HOD, the management of the hospital and the faculty uh, under whom you are training. The first two years, as I call it, is the honeymoon period of your whole residency because you are new to the hospital, you are new to the city, you to explore the city for the first few weeks, get acquainted to the people around you, to the work culture, to the life of a cardiothoracic surgeon during the first uh, few months of the first two years. Uh, by the end of one and a half years, I started studying for the exams, which happens at the end of two years. which i'll be talking about in detail even i also found time to write my mles that is my us mle exams during the first two years also so i'll be telling you about it in detail in my upcoming video how you prepare uh, for your us mle exams uh, during your residency uh, so considering you have enough residents and a relaxed working hours the first two years are very easy to sail through uh, some of the tips i have given in my previous video also so go do check it out for more insights Uh, so during your first two years, you will be posted in uh, general surgery ward and OT. So ward duties for the first few months, then you will be upgraded into the OT uh, part one, as it is called, which happens at the end of two years, consists of a theory exam, a practical that is the viva exam, and a OSCE exam that is objective structured clinical examination, which is like a MCQ question. Uh, so I'll be talking about everything in detail. First is the theory exam. For the theory exam, there are certain books which you need to read, which I'll be telling you. The theory exam consists of two papers. One is the general surgery paper. Where secondly, second paper is the cardiac paper, that is the basics of anatomy, physiology, embryology of cardiac surgery, uh, and thoracic surgery. Next is the practical exam. The practical exam is conducted one day. Mm -hmm. So there are four cases: uh, one long case or three short cases, or two long case and two short cases, depending upon the examiner. So they will tell you at the exam center itself. Fine, but there will be four cases which you have to present. Um, most most likely, like 
80 to 90 percent of the times they, this will be these four cases that is a valvular case uh, that is a valvular heart disease a peripheral arterial disease case uh, a cyanotic congenital heart disease case and a cyanotic congenital heart disease case you have to prepare very well for these four for these satya sai notes is the only thing you have to study for practicals during the whole six years even for the first part one exam and also the part two exam which happens at the end of five years i'll be talking about it uh, the third part of the exam is the oski exam the oski exam is conducted in a different institute it basically is an objective exam uh, they'll show you some pictorial diagrams and ask you four five questions based on it and the marks is allotted according to the question like one mark for each question Coming to year 3, year 3 you will be posted in cardiac wards uh, for the first few months or at least a year and then followed by cardiac surgery OTs. Uh, there will be cath lab rotations, OPD rotations, uh, everything cardiac based, you know, the general surgery part is over. Uh, so there will be eco postings depending upon the number of months as uh, provided by the NB's curriculum. The 4th, 5th and 6th year residents are mainly posted into cardiac OTs and the ICU that is the post-op and, and the cardiac uh, OT management. Uh, so all the cut work is usually done by the juniors and now you come to the real thing. You are mainly focusing on the skills you develop in the OT and then the ICU postings. Uh, there will be night shifts, day shifts depending upon uh, what your faculty has arranged for you. Uh, pointers for OT rotation. Uh, you start with vein and radial artery harvesting, uh, then move up to the chest, that is chest opening and chest closures. Second, then you scale up to lima harvesting, uh, then you do central and peripheral cannulations in adult and pediatric patients. And by the time you are in the uh, internship year, you start learning to do the proximal anastomosis and the distal anastomosis and CABG and so on and so forth, depending upon how fast you progress in your surgical skills. Uh, when when I started my third year, I invested to buy a whiteboard and I put it on my wall. Uh, so every day I used to go into the OT, all the surgical skills I learned, I used to mark one by one on the board and see how many vein harvestings I have done throughout the course of the year, how many radial harvestings I have done, how many chest opening closures I have done. Uh, so I used to keep a count of this so that I used to know where I am uh, progressing and how confident I am in each step as I progress to, through the years. So you can do it for yourself. Uh, it's not a compulsion. And also once you gain con confidence and mastery uh, in one skill, uh, the professor will be uh, judging you based on how you behave in the OT and how you are progressing and then uh, take you to the next step. And till he is not confident about how well you are doing or mastering the particular step, he will not teach you the next step of the surgery. Uh, so hustle fast. During the fifth year, start focusing on your final exams because you have to get over with the final exams uh, which comprises of a theory and a practical paper. There is no OSCE in the final fifth year exam. Uh, so start focusing. If you have studied throughout the year, it's okay. If you have not studied, then at least three to four months. Three months is also okay. Three months before the exam date, start studying vigorously. Uh, the eligibility criteria for appearing for the final cardiothoracic and vascular surgery exam is uh, you, first you have to have completed the DN, DRNB part one exams, all the theory, practicals and the OSCE. Uh, secondly, the thesis should be submitted, updated and submitted on the website. Thirdly is the logbook update. Uh, fourth is the formative assessment tests and the internal exams that you have to give over a period of five years. Uh, to be eligible, you need to give uh, at least one formative assessment test that is the FAT exam and two of the internal exams. FAT exam is conducted by the NBE where uh, you have to go to a, another center and give the exam and internals are conducted in your own hospital but question papers are set by your own uh, faculty and correct. I have compiled a list of 100 questions for all you guys in 
uh, from the DNB CTBS papers in the last 10 years. I did only those 100 questions over and over again, at least three, two to three revisions is necessary before exam. And I could manage all my questions in both my uh, papers. Uh, so I have put a link in the description below to the questions which I have collected for you. Hope this helps as it did for me. Sixth year is the internship year. It's the most fun year because if you have completed your exams by the end of fifth year, then you have the internship year to completely focus on work only, attend OTs regularly, improve your surgical skills. And after that, uh, you have an option in the last six months of your internship year to transfer out to another hospital if you want to. If you don't want to, you can stay back and learn the skills in the same hospital. Or if you want to transfer out to another hospital, First, you have to take an NOC from the hospital you're working in, that is the DRNB course you have done in. And second, the, the hospital you're transferring out to has to have a vacancy to accept you as a resident there. Uh, and secondly, the payment which has to be done, you have to uh, negotiate between your parent hospital and the in-law hospital that who's going to pay you for the last six months and if one of them agrees then you can do get over with all the process and then transfer out to the other hospital for the last six months i also personally enrolled for some dance classes during the internship year so after work i used to attend weekly dance classes to keep keep me busy I remember one of my seniors had joined a uh, rifle shooting classes so every Sunday used to go and train there as a sport activity. So you can do all those things in internship year because you don't have the burden of studies in your mind anymore. At the end of residency you have to collect the training completion certificate from your parent hospital. Secondly a bona fide certificate from your hospital. Uh, and you have to upload these documents on the website NB website under your account login so that they can provide you a uh, final degree certificate. At the end of sixth year, you should have made a decision whether you want to pursue a thoracic surgery or a cardiac surgery. If you want to do cardiac surgery, then you should have decided whether you want to pursue adult cardiac surgery or pediatric cardiac surgery. That means How you plan your six years is totally up to you. If you like this video, then click on the subscribe button for more such upcoming videos. And if you are a CTVS resident and watching this video, do mention in the comments your insights on this video and let me know your journey about how you planned your six years in the, in the CTVS residency. Connect to me on LinkedIn as the link is given below. Bye.